so first of all, thank you for having me. I'm really glad to be here with you today. Uh, and uh, while I've heard your introduction about a whole department advocating for the use of ad tech tools, all I could think was, I wish I would have had that when I worked at the university in Bucharest, because that would have been so much easier. So uh, thank you also to everybody who already said hello in the chat and you've told us what faculty you are joining us from. It's good to see a mix of uh, uh, professors and teachers and stuff from so many different uh, faculties and so many different departments. Um, so these are just, just a quick intro about myself. So you know who I am and what I'm doing and why I'm here talking about the uh, Edpuzzle and using technology in, uh, in education in general. Uh, my name is Bogdan Kopil. I was a science teacher. Before that, I did work with the University of Bucharest uh, as a research assistant. So I have that experience as well, the university experience. Uh, then I moved to teaching in uh, middle school and high school. Uh, and now for a few years, I've stepped outside of the classroom. And now I am actually working as an ed tech coach and ed tech specialist and trainer with teachers from all over the world. So in the map you see here, these are just the physical locations where I actually had training sessions, but especially now in the past year with the distance learning and COVID and all the changes that uh, came into our lives, uh, I've actually worked with teachers from all over the place. Uh, and I'm really happy to, to work with, uh, with you as well today. So my background is in chemistry. I, was, uh, I am a chemist. As I said, I did, I did work as a research assistant at the University of Bucharest in Romania. Uh, I am originally from Romania, but right now I am based in Prague in the Czech Republic. So for me, it's uh, 11 minutes to nine in the morning. So it's the best way to, to start my day with a uh, with training, uh, talking about technology and the proper use of technology in the classroom and uh, different ideas of using it. Now, having said that, my background is in science. Uh, that was my bachelor. I had experience as a research assistant, as I said, but my master's degree is in education. So I actually got the master's degree in adult education. Uh, so I've been part of different departments in the University of Bucharest, both the science one and uh, also the education one. So once again, I'm happy to see such a diverse mix uh, in, uh, in the participants today as well. Now, what will we be doing today? Let me give you an overview and then I think we can dive right in because uh, uh, I hope everybody is in or if somebody else joins us later, they will catch up with us. Just one quick thing I want to mention before uh, we start. Uh, I also have my colleague Celia uh, with us. She's in the Zoom. So uh, she might be uh, answering some of the questions as well in the chat. So pay attention to that as well if you have some questions and uh, somehow I don't notice it or uh, something happens. Celia is with us as well. So thank you, Celia, for, for being here with us. Uh, okay, are we good to go? I think we, we can uh, dive right in. So what, uh, what would be the structure of today's session? So as the name suggests, uh, Zero to Hero, this is a sort of an introductory session, but we also want to see uh, to give you some ideas of how you could use Edpuzzle with your students or uh, um, in general for teaching, for giving feedback, for gathering data and so on and so forth. I would like to know more or less before we start, how familiar are you with Edpuzzle? So just quickly in the chat, choose one, one if you've never used it. And as you see, I've, I've, I've uh, added the word yet because I do hope that uh, many of you will be using Edpuzzle after today. Two, if you've tried it out, and three, if you're already using it with your students. Okay, I see lots of ones. I also see some twos and threes. Cool, that's good. So uh, for those of you that chose three, uh, I'll be more than happy to pick your brains as well. So I would be happy if you would share also some of the ways in which you use that puzzle with the others. Uh, for those of you that chose one, Today's session will be uh, a really good intro to Edpuzzle because we will talk a bit about how we could use it and I will also show you how to set it up and how to get going. So uh, thank you for, for your input and let's dive right in. So let's start with the very beginning. What is actually Edpuzzle? 
Um, we use, we talk about video and using video for instruction and using videos can be very helpful for us, both as professors and also um, assistants and so on and so forth. E we can think about it also as in some cases, creating copies of ourselves, right? Uh, because if you have a video that you recorded or that somebody else recorded and you share it with your students, many students can watch that video at their own pace and they can get information from the video um, whenever they need it. What is Edpuzzle? Edpuzzle actually allows us to get videos either from YouTube or our own videos, and we can embed our own assessment questions on top of the video, and that will allow us a couple of really neat things. So we could check our students' progress, for example, we could give them feedback, we could give them uh, links to other resources on top of the video, we could add voice notes, and so on and so forth. So this brings the whole use of videos to the next level. Uh, and uh, you'll see how easy it is to actually get it going. Now, just a couple of things also for the session because we have quite a large number of participants. Um, it would be a bit difficult to expect all of you to go through the count setup process and to create a video, um, but I will show you how to do that. Now, if at any point you have questions or if you want me to repeat something or if you're not sure that uh, I've explained something or you haven't understood something, please feel free to let me know. Just type in the chat or raise your hand or just give me a sign. I'll be more than happy to, uh, to repeat bits of the presentation or to go over some of the features in that puzzle again and so on and so forth. But please do let me know, type it in the chat or just raise your hand. Now, what is uh, the story once again with using the video? So as I said, once we share a video with our students, we never know what's happening. Did they watch it? Did they not watch it? Did they understand what was in the video? Did they have questions? Can I help them with follow-up materials? We have no idea. With Edpuzzle though, all of that changes. Now students will be able to watch the video at their own pace and we have all the tools we need to keep them accountable. We will see how much of the video they've watched. We can see who answered the questions. We can see which of their answers were correct, we can give them feedback and so on and so forth. So this is a great way to boost student engagement, but also, as I said, it provides useful information for us as educators. And I want to quickly uh, go through several examples of when we could use that puzzle. Now, keep in mind, these are some generic examples, uh, but we can easily adapt them to whatever we would be teaching. I do realize that different faculties will have slightly different needs, and depending on what you're actually teaching or the format of the course you have, you will be able to adapt the way you use video in so many different ways. So if you have in-class activities or a lecture or in person, right, you can think about different formats of blended learning, uh, rotation stations, for example, where different groups have different projects and they work on different, uh, different activities. So for our, uh, use case, we can think about a jigsaw activity, for example, where we would like to hand out some topics or some research questions to different groups of students. We would like to give them some material. We would like to give them time to do their own research as a group. And then we bring them to the class and ask them to present on that topic. So that's another example of a jigsaw activity where the use of video can be very powerful because we can already give them starting material, we can guide them and we could have different groups working at the same time. So this will actually also save us time with giving them the instructions, setting the group and everything else. Of course, we also have the individual work, which uh, is the basic approach. Uh, and there are many different other creative ways of using it in the classroom. When it comes to homework or students working outside of the face-to-face -face meetings or outside of the contact time, you can think about many different ways of using it as well. So you could complement your lesson or your lecture. Let's say you had a lecture and you want to send some follow-up materials. It's as easy as just creating the video, adding the links, questions, uh, notes on it and sending it to your students. You can also twist it. So rather than complementing your lesson and sending them materials after the lesson, you can also think about the fleet classroom model, right? So in that case, you would send videos ahead of the lecture to your students. They will prepare for the class discussion. 
they will have the basic knowledge when uh, when they get to, to the lecture or to the online class. And then during the contact time, you can focus on those deeper conversations, that meaningful learning and so on and so forth. And of course, we can also use it for review, uh, think about study guides or review guides and so on and so forth. But you can also think about creative use, right? Uses, right? So I know that when I was working in the chemistry department at the university, of course, we had lab rules. Students needed to know those rules. They needed to um, acknowledge them. And we needed proof for the fact that they did read the rules. They had to, we had to sign on a paper. So we had to track that. Here's a creative idea. We could just have a video explaining all the rules, share it with our students. And because that puzzle allows us to keep track of the progress, we will see how many of them watch the video, and then we could add a question at the end, asking them to confirm that they agree with the rules or they've acknowledged them. So once again, with a bit of creativity and thinking outside of the box, we can use it in so many different ways. Now, besides the ways in which we can use it, you can also think about how can you actually view videos on that puzzle. There's the classic approach where students either watch it individually or they go to the videos uh, at their own pace, be it in class or at home, uh, or you're using the flipped classroom model or you have different types of blended learning. There's also a second option for when we will go back to face-to-face -face meeting and uh, we'll be uh, in lectures with our students. You could even just project a video on the screen and have students answer on their own devices in real time. What would be the advantage here? The advantage would be that, for example, if you want to have a group discussion or in-class discussion, you could do a raise of hands, like who well, thinks this is correct or this isn't. But with Edpuzzle, if you add the questions and students quickly give you the answers on their devices, you will have at a glance their input on that part of the video. You will have clear numbers. You will see exactly how many students agree with something or disagree with something, for example, how many students got the, uh, an answer correct or how many of them got it wrong. And that is a great conversation starter. So from there, you can go in depth with, uh, with the conversations. So you don't have to guess anymore what's happening. You'll have all this data. The next question is, okay, we have all of these options. How do we organize them? Well, Edpuzzle works with classes just like we work normally, so you have a roster of students and you can assign videos and I'll show you how easy it is to do that. Uh, in the classic approach, you'll have students logging in with their Edpuzzle account. They can watch the videos you assign to them and you as a teacher will be able to track their progress across all of your videos. So if you create a classic class, you have some advantages. Uh, and especially if you plan to use a lot of videos, uh, definitely this would be the one for you. You might also want to use it for, uh, let's say, some demos or just some open classes, quick practices, and so on and so forth. Then you might want to create an open class, which uh, you can use without students having an account. The downside is that in this case, of course, you will not be able to track students' progress across different videos. You will only see the student progress on that one video that you share with them. Uh, so, as I said, there are advantages and disadvantages for both of them, but there are situations where one of them would be better than the other. This is something that you'll have to decide based on your needs. And a good part is that, uh, and I promise I'll stop talking about uh, what's happening on the slides and we are jumping in the demo uh, in just a bit. Um, the good part is that once you start using Edpuzzle, you'll see that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So yes, you can use your own videos, but you can also just as well use a ready-made lesson from another teacher, from another professor. Uh, you can use any video from YouTube, for example, and you could copy it and add your questions on top. And as I said, you can also upload and record your own teaching videos. So I was mentioning that we will jump in the demo. So that's, uh, that's the next part of, uh, of, the, of the training session. I want to quickly ask you though, do you have any questions so far in terms of more or less what Edpuzzle is and uh, what it can do? Or do you want to share any ways in which you've used Edpuzzle already? Uh, so if somebody has been using it already, uh, I'd be happy to hear your input as well. 
So, Wendy, good question. Can it be used in Microsoft 365 and any LMS? Yes, it can be used uh, in conjunction with different LMSs. Um, and even with Moodle, because uh, you've mentioned that you're using Moodle, uh, it can be integrated. And actually, I will share some resources with you regarding that. Uh, with Google Classroom as well, with Google Classroom, the integration is seamless and it's really easy to use it. So if you are using uh, Google Classroom uh, or Moodle or other LMSs, yes, you can use them in conjunction with them. So definitely that is an option. Okay, so let's go through setting up an account as a, uh, as a teacher, right? Uh, and I'll guide you through this process quickly. I'll show you how easy it is to set up the account and to get going. So I will open an incognito window. So I'm not logged in with any account. So you'll see me going through this process from the very beginning. So of course I would go to edpuzzle.com. And uh, when you log in, this is also uh, an advantage of if you use Google Classroom, for example, when you sign up, you can actually use your Google account rather than you creating an Edpuzzle account from scratch, you could just log in with your Google so in this case, I am a teacher, so I will sign up as a teacher. And as I said, if I would be using, uh, if I would be logged in with my Google account, I could have just signed in with it. Now I'm in an incognito window, so it will not work, but I want to show you how to create the account from scratch, right? So I just need my basic details, Bogdan, Kopil. I will have uh, my uh, email and this is once again, once you use your email, uh, you can also use a password. You, you, you have to choose a password. And the referral code, this is optional. So uh, if you have a referral code for some, from somebody that used already at Puzzle, you will have three more videos as a bonus storage uh, in, the, in the trial version. This is optional, so you don't need to worry about it. Uh, now, of course, we will have to agree to the terms of service and privacy policy. I would encourage you to check them, not only for Edpuzzle, but in general for any tool you're using. Uh, and especially if you have questions regarding the privacy policy, this is a great starting point. Uh, you'll see that the data is safe. Uh, so Edpuzzle actually is compliant with uh, some of the strictest uh, data protection uh, policies out there, including the GDPR, which was a big thing uh, introduced by the European Union, which actually affects almost all users. And of course, if you want to stay up to date with updates and uh, offers from Edpuzzle and tips for using it and so on and so forth, you can tick the second box as well. Now, it's that easy, you are in. The next step would be to choose your school. And this is where I want to explain how this works and what this could be useful for. So you can search for your uh, institution, right? So I can search for uh, University of Malaya or I can search for any other institutions if it's already here. So let's say there is already a school or a university on at Puzzle. What this will allow you to do is to see what other videos your colleagues created. So in that case, you will be able to create videos and content together as a faculty and share it around. Right, so uh, oh, well, we already have the code in, uh, in the chat. Thank you so much for that. Uh, so I would recommend you to, to choose your school in this case, because that will allow you to actually connect with other educators and uh, from the university and see what other videos they have been using. For my demo, I will use my own organization. So you see how this works. Then you can choose your grade level. Uh, I will. In this case, we'll choose higher education college. And uh, let's say, because I was a chemistry teacher and I was uh, teaching chemistry and I'm a chemist, I would choose chemistry. You can add other subjects and grade levels. This will help you find videos related to, uh, to your uh, topic, but you can also search for videos manually. So this will just help at Puzzle to give you some recommendations. Now, then in the next step, you'll notice that uh, my account, I, I need to confirm the, uh, the email. So I will have this message on top and I need to verify my account. Uh, I will do that in the background so we don't uh, have this uh, message popping here all the time. But once you confirm your email address, you should be good to go. Now, what do we have in the Edpuzzle, uh, in the Edpuzzle account? Uh, well, pretty straightforward. 
And that's why I wanted to show you how easy it is to get going and how easy it is to actually create your first class as students and then start sharing videos. So let me just reload because uh, I did confirm my email. And as you see, that blue um, banner went away. So yeah, that's thank you, Celia, as well for the for the uh, comment. So remember to check your email address to confirm it. That blue banner warning message goes away, and now you can start using that puzzle. Now, what would be the next step? We can think about how do we want to organize our videos and our classes, and we'll start here. So we'll start with uh, organizing our classes or our groups of students. And for this, we can go to my classes. Now, I was telling you that there is an integration with Google Classroom straight away. So with Google Classroom, it's really easy. You can connect directly to the classroom. Edpuzzle will import uh, your rosters. It will import all the students. And you will have a neat list of your students. And it integrates really well. You can also add the classes manually. Uh, and here, of course, we will uh, either create it from scratch. And once again, you have the option to connect to Google Classroom. For other LMSs, there are options to work with it as well. So don't worry, I'll share some resources with that as well. So I would just say, let's say I'm creating a class on uh, nano uh, technology. This was one of my biggest passions during university. You can add a description, which is optional. The grade level and subject will be chosen by default based on, remember, what we chose in the first step when we created our account. So I did choose higher education, college, and chemistry. We can always manually change it without any issue. This is where we choose the class type. Remember, I, uh, I was mentioning this uh, during the initial intro. Um, basically, when you have the, the classic, uh, the classic uh, type of uh, class, this is where your students log in or sign up and they will get the analytics uh, that Ed Edpuzzle has to offer. Now for the open class, as I said, you don't need an account. Uh, it will actually just work with, um, even if you have an open class, a one-time open class or something like that, you can just send the link and uh, things would be okay. Uh, the next bit, let's say we have a classic uh, class for this example. Next step, create the class. And that's it. So uh, this is where we actually look at inviting students. So the next step, with, uh, we will look at inviting students with a code or with a link. There are different ways of doing it. So on the invite students, you'll see that I cannot invite students directly. I will need to choose one of these options before I carry on. Now, remember what we said about data protection and privacy policy. Um, basically, we have a look at uh, the, uh, the consent that's needed. Uh, then that can change based on local laws or different regulations. Now, for you, because we are talking about university, it might be a bit easier. So you, choose, you could choose whatever works best for you, right? So here, I would say no. I don't, it's not a local requirement or we have the proper age. Now, we are done with that step. I have a code which I will copy because I will want to show you also the student interface and how students actually uh, works, uh, how, how the interface looks like for a student. I can copy the link and then I could send it to my students uh, via email or via uh, Moodle or um, Teams, for example. I can put it in the chat and then I can show it via email. So uh, there isn't a direct integration with, uh, with uh, uh, Teams just yet, but we can still share links with them and they can actually just click on the link and join the class. And of course, as I said, we can always share it via email. So this is basically the idea of creating a class and inviting all students. Once students are in, we'll see them showing up here uh, and we'll, we'll have a roster of all the students. Are we good so far with the, the whole process, creating an account and creating a class? Please do let me know if you have questions in the chat. Uh, and uh, if you want me to repeat something, I'll be more than happy to do that. But now, once we've created the account, we've created the class, we've gotten this out of the way, this is where we get to the most exciting part, which is actually using videos and actually sharing them with 
our students, right? So let's try to find a video and let's see what we can do in Edpuzzle with it. So I can start from the home page. So I can just click on the Edpuzzle on the top left and it will take me to my home page. You'll see the menu on the left where you can navigate things and you'll see some video recommendations based on your previous searches, based on what classes you teach, based on your subject and so on and so forth. Where can we find videos? We can actually search out the videos on our, uh, by ourselves. Edpuzzle also has a curriculum section, which for you uh, might not be so relevant because it's focused on elementary, middle school, and high school. But especially if you're looking at the, if you're at the Faculty of Education, for example, and if you'd like to have a look at some case studies for how curriculum is uh, designed or how lesson plans are written and so on and so forth, they might be uh, useful for you as well. Other than that, we have the EdTech Coach. This is the organization. So for me, it would be EdTech Coach because this is my organization. For you, once you join uh, your domain, your organization, University of Malaya, you will see teachers that uh, you will see videos that were created by fellow teachers in your in the university. So that's why, uh, if you will use the link that was shared in the chat earlier with you uh, to to join uh, the organization, you will be able to uh, you will be able to to work with this. So you don't have to worry about the LMS just for now. So once you create the class, uh, so there is a direct integration with several LMSs which allow you to pull the roster directly and have the student list. Um, but at this stage, when you create the video, you can you first create a video, you add your questions, you add your notes, and then you share it with your students. And that can be done in different ways. So let's get the video created. Let me show you what elements we can add on top of the video, and then we'll see how we can actually share it. So these are, this is the third option. So we can look at the recommendations. We have the curriculum. We have the organization videos. But we can also search for content directly. We have quick links to several popular channels on YouTube. But let's say I'm searching for nanotechnology because this is my uh, class subject. And uh, I, need to, I need to actually uh, find a video for one of my lectures. Now, one thing I want to draw your attention to is that the first result that will show up, or the first results, the first page of results that show up, these are all videos that were created by the Edpuzzle community. So when you create your video, you can choose to share it with the wider community. And you see uh, who, uh, you, you see if a video is hosted on Edpuzzle, for example, uh, you see how many questions and notes each video has. Uh, you see who created it. And if you want to use one of the videos that's already there, you can just preview it, see how it looks like. You see the multiple choice questions that the teachers, uh, the creator added. If you want to use it, you can just create a copy and use it for yourself. Now, I want to show you also how easy it is to actually start from scratch. So rather than using the video that's already created, let me guide you the process of creating your first video in Edpuzzle, right? So I will change from the Edpuzzle community and I will focus on searching on YouTube. So by doing this, I'm actually searching not videos that are already created in Edpuzzle, but I'm actually looking for videos and material on YouTube. And I can choose uh, a video that would be uh, useful for me, right? So of course, I can explore the videos now for this simple example. We will just uh, we will just use one video as a quick demo. Let's choose this one because it is current. It's talking about the COVID-19 vaccines and uh, nanoparticles that were involved in the creation of these vaccines, right? So what I would do next is, of course, I would watch the video first. Uh, I would see what is um, relevant for the video, what I need. For, for my um, students and what types of questions I want to add. So once you have the video chosen, you can actually edit the video. So this is the magic button which allows you to add uh, those, all of those elements on top of the video. The first thing I want to show you is that you can cut the video. So let's say you have a video that's really long, but you don't actually need the whole video. You can skip the intro or they might have some extra bits at the end that you do not need, you can just cut it from here. You can make it uh, shorter. 
Also, let's say you want to cut a middle segment. So there is a bit in the video that you don't need or is not relevant for this activity. You can also just move the slider on the video and you can add a cut here as well. So what you'll notice is that you do have the cut in the middle of the video and then you can also change where it starts playing again. So this is an easy way to even curate some of the videos out there. So you might even think about, you might have a long video, like a long lecture, which you might want to use across different, uh, different sessions. And then you could split it in different bits rather than having to worry about recreating the video every single time or splitting it in segments and then uploading different segments. You can just start from the long video and do the cuts directly in at Puzzle. Uh, and that allows you a lot of flexibility. And uh, as I said, it also saves you a lot of time, but we are just starting now. So this is just the beginning, right? So we have the cuts, we are ready with uh, uh, the duration of the video and, uh, and the uh, segments. The next bit we have as an option is the voiceover. Now, just a heads up, when you use YouTube videos, uh, voiceover is blocked because of the YouTube, uh, YouTube terms of service, but, if you upload your own video, remember that's also an option. You could have your own lecture recorded or you could create your own video. Then you could simply upload it to Edpuzzle and then you will also have the option to add voiceovers. So for example, um, we, you could actually um, add uh, different voiceovers for different groups. So that's a really good question uh, about copyright issues. So remember that when a video is shared on YouTube, for example, you have two types of licenses. You have the YouTube standard license and you have the uh, Creative Commons license. Now, when you're actually, when we say that we are editing the video in Edpuzzle, you're actually not editing the video itself on YouTube. So the, view, the video will stay the same on YouTube. You cannot change the video. It's not your video. Somebody else uploaded it. It's on their channel. Uh, so when we say edit in Edpuzzle, actually we just edit what our students see from that video. So uh, you don't have to worry about uh, copyright, basically, because the video is still hosted on YouTube. Whatever is uh, uh, on YouTube, you actually can use as long as it's on YouTube, right? And of course, it wouldn't be okay if you would take a video from YouTube and then you would say, hey, this is my video, I've created it and so on and so forth. So then, yes, that's a different story Then we do hit copyright uh, and uh, then we have problems, but that's a slightly different conversation. So uh, basically, long story short, you can use videos from YouTube created by the teachers without any worries. If you want to record videos and upload them as well, then you will be the owner, of course, and you have the, you have the copyright. So uh, where, where do you click? Uh, we had a question, where do you click to actually see the cut and voiceover tools? So this would be in the edit video. So once you chose the video, uh, and I'll show it again after we are done. Um, I'll show you again with another video. So we have the cut, we have the voiceover, and then we get to the biggest part, which is the questions. Uh, so this is where in this section, we can add different elements on top of the video. So remember what I said at the beginning, yeah, I could share videos with the, with the students or the participants in my trainings, but then I wouldn't know if they watched them, I wouldn't know if they were paying attention and so on and so forth. What Edpuzzle does is it solves that issue for me because now I can add different elements and different types of questions along the video uh, and students will have to actually answer those questions. Now we have three main types of questions. We have the multiple choice and these ones actually can be graded automatically. We have the open-ended questions where students can uh, add any answer they want. And of course, these are the ones that we would use to encourage critical thinking, to go deeper with the conversations uh, and so on and so forth. Um, and we can also add notes, which are not really questions, but this is where we can add comments or we could add links, for example, to other resources, or we could even record a, an audio message. So let's think about how I would use this uh, um, video, right? So just to give an example of each type of question, Let's say I want to show this video to my students and we want to talk about nanoparticles and we want to talk about the whole process of creating vaccines involving nanoparticles. I might want to actually start at the very beginning of the video. I might want to start with an open-ended question. And this is a question where I would 
either see how much my students remember from my previous lecture, or if it's a new topic, how much they know about that topic already, or if we are planning to start a conversation or a discussion, I can see their initial input, right? So I can just ask something like, what role do you think? Oh, sorry, maybe I should type it correctly. Uh, nanoparticles play in the creation of COVID vaccines. And this, is, this would be a good point for me to see if students already know something about it or not. Now, once again, I'm using this just as an example to demonstrate how you add the, the question types. You can use the open-ended question at the end of the lesson, not at the beginning. You can use them anywhere in your video. This is how you will know that you have a question. So on the timeline of the video, you will have these pointers. And if you click on them, it will take you back to where that question is and you will have quick and easy access to them. Now, then of course I will scroll through, uh, through the um, video and I will choose the part where I want to add one more question, right? So here uh, I would just say, I want to add a multiple choice question. And I will just say something like viral DNA can enter uh, the cell on its own. And I will need to give the possible answers. Yes, no. And the good part about the multiple choice questions is that I can already tell at puzzle, hey, this would be the correct question and it would automatically grade it. So if you want to just engage students and see how much they remember from the video and whatnot, you could add different questions like this along the video. And this would also give immediate feedback to your students. So this is very useful, not only for you because you'll see how much they understood from the video, but also for them because they can check their knowledge on the spot. And uh, thinking about education theory and whatnot, the sooner they get the feedback, the better it is for them. You see, I have the second question. I can then carry on, go to another part of the video and uh, I can add more questions, right? So I can go crazy with the questions. I can add as many as I want. At some point, for example, let's say here, I would like to share some resources with them, either here or at the very end of the video. Once again, you decide where. I can add a note and in the note, I would just say, hey, please, uh, check this link for extra materials. And then I can, of course, insert the link uh, and uh, I can just add the link to, uh, to that, right? So we can easily do that. We can also use for all the science teachers out there, uh, we can also use equations. So we can add equations in the notes as well. Uh, and also the other bit that we can do is we can actually record the voice note. So in some cases, it might be a great addition on the video to just add a voice message for your students uh, and tell them, of course, I will need to allow a puzzle to use my microphone. And I will just say, hey, okay, this is the um, resource. Please have a look at it and so on and so forth. And as you see, it records it and then it will attach it to the note. When you're done, save. And that's it. So this is a really quick example of the three types of questions we had. And of course, uh, we can have uh, multiple questions in, uh, in a video. You can have as many questions as you want. You'll see the video events listed on the left-hand side. You can uh, keep track of them. And as I said, you can easily navigate between them. So when you're happy with how the video looks like, you can just hit finish and you have the video ready to be used with your students. Now, this is where we need to start thinking about how do we actually want to share this video and how do we want to uh, um, assign it, right? So we have several options on the menu in the uh, right-hand side. And by the way, if you realize that you want to make some changes, just click on the edit button again, go to your video, make the changes and you're good to go. You can make changes at any time. You can also create a copy. So let's say you might want to use the same video with two different groups and you might want to have slightly different questions on one of the groups. You don't have to recreate the whole video from beginning to add all of the elements, just create it once for the first group, create a copy and then change the questions for the second uh, version 
only for the second group. Uh, and uh, that would save you a lot of time as well. Uh, you can also then, as I said, decide if you want to make your video public or private on the Edpuzzle community. Uh, and when you're done, you're ready to assign it, you can just click on assign. And this is where you'll see that you have the classes. And that's why we started by creating a class. So that was the first, uh, that was the first, uh, that was the first step. We've created the class, so then we can assign the video to a certain class. So I do have the now technology class. I can choose also to assign, and this is also a good addition, right? A good feature. We can choose to assign it to all students, or we can choose to assign it manually to certain students only. Now, I have also some options, so I could choose a start date. So let's say I'm starting today, and the due date, I would like it to be on Monday, July the 5th. Oh, sorry. Uh, July the 5th, save. And I have two other useful options here. I can prevent skipping. What does that mean? It means that as long as this option or this feature is enabled, students will not be able to skip through the video. They have to watch the whole video. Now, I would use this sparingly with fact, uh, university students uh, because they should have a bit more autonomy. But if you have videos that you know that it's really important for them to watch them, then definitely leave it on and then they will not be able to skip any part of the video. They will have to watch it uh, uh, from, from the beginning till the end. Uh, otherwise, they will not be able to turn in the assignment. Uh, now, the other part that you can, uh, the other thing that you can do here is you can turn on the closed captions here, uh, and this would add the, the, the closed captions on the screen. When you're ready, just click assign, and this will share it with your students, right? Now, this is where you'll see the assignment. Uh, so this is your view of the assignment in a puzzle or the video uh, assignment. You'll see all the questions, and once students start answering the questions, uh, you will be able to uh, see their progress as well. Now, once you have the assignment, let's say you might want to share it with other people and also to answer the question we had in the chat, can you, uh, can you share it? You could get the link here, right? So you could uh, get the link for direct access with your uh, for your students. And then of course, especially if you're using Moodle, for example, you could even embed this on your uh, Moodle. So you can get the code, embed it there, and students will be able to watch it directly in Moodle. So that's also a neat, uh, a neat feature. So copy the link and that's it. Now, one other thing that we need to um, look at uh, is how students use Edpuzzle. And I'll quickly show you the process for a student account so you see how it works. Uh, and then I'll just give you some other ideas. So, but just, I want to check in with you so far. What do you think about this whole process? Does it look complicated or is it uh, pretty, pretty straightforward, right? Uh, so uh, remember that this is just the intro uh, and then once you understand what types of questions you can add and once you think about what types of videos you could use, you can easily adapt them to fit your needs. So once again, Thank you for the questions in the chat. Uh, I'm trying to answer them as we go along. Thank you, Celia, as well, for, for helping. So remember, I've told you, I showed you that you can easily get the link as well and, uh, and uh, share it with them. So no worries. You can easily just get the link, uh, and then you can just share it with the students. Now, let's have a quick look at the student side, right? And let's see how a student would go through this whole experience. And I'll get a new incognito window, and I will join as a, uh, as a student, uh, and you will see how this will actually work, right? Same process, uh, you, I, I can log in or sign up. I choose, I'm a student in this case, I will sign up with Edpuzzle and I will need a class code. So you see that the sign up process is different for students than for teachers, and I will need to have a class code. Remember earlier, I've copied the class code when I created the class, so uh, I'll, I'll just use it here. Uh, and then, of course, I will need to uh, add my details as well, my name, and I can choose a username. So uh, the good part about it is that I'll just say Bogdan C and a password. Now, keep in mind, if you already have a student account, created, you will not have to go through this process every single time you join a class, 
So once you have your account created, all you'll need it will be the uh, will be the the code, and that's it. So you don't have to worry about that. And as you see, here I am. I am in the class. I can already see my class. And as I said earlier, if you will be joining multiple classes as a student, you will have all of them listed here in the menu. So I have the nanotechnology class. I see what assignments are due. I can then start going through the video. And this is what students see while they go through the assignment. So as you see, the video stops playing until I actually give it my initial answer. So what role do you think nanoparticles play in the creation of COVID vaccines? Uh, and I'll say they help carry the viral RNA, for example, and I can submit my answer. Then I can continue and I can carry on with the video. Now, remember what I was showing you earlier, because I chose, uh, because I chose um, to prevent students from skipping through the video, they will actually have to watch the video and go through the whole video. Of course, if for whatever reason, they want to rewatch part of the video, they can also click on this quick button. This will rewind it uh, to the previous segment and then they can rewatch that part of the video. So this is important, once again, giving students autonomy and giving them control and they can watch at their own pace and they can actually go back and rewatch that part of the video that was not clear for them or maybe they are not sure how to answer a question. They can easily rewatch that part of the video. Now, as you'll notice, as a student, I cannot, I don't have any turning button, any submit button, anything like that. So I just see where in the video I have other elements or other questions. Uh, and I will be able to turn in or submit my video only once I've watched all of it. What does that mean in terms of questions? So let's say I've watched the video up to here. I did answer the question and I will submit it. As you see, um, I chose the wrong answer when I've created the question. So always good to double check that as a teacher, as a professor, that was my mistake because the answer should have been no. But you see, once again, the feedback they receive is immediate. And once they are done watching the video, they can then submit it and turn it in. Now, this is the student uh, um, uh, interface and the student view of uh, Edpuzzle. Let me go back to a teacher view and let me show you, uh, let's flip the coin and go back to the teacher part because that's what's important for us, right? Let me quickly show you what type of information I actually have in my dashboard as a teacher and how valuable all of this input is for me. So I will use my other account where I actually have some students in, uh, in my class. So you see how it would look like with a roster of students and you will see what type of information that puzzle gives you. So this is a class I've created uh, where you see I have several students already. I see that I have some assignments and for this one, um, I have eight new answers. I also see at a glance how many students turned it in and I can go and check the data that the puzzle is providing me. And this already gives me a couple of valuable insights as in how many of my students actually watched the whole video, Vlad only watched 20% of it, Antonio only, uh, only 50%. Also, because remember what I said earlier, multiple choice questions can be graded automatically. Uh, yeah, I, have, I, I chose some famous uh, personalities as my students. So I have Nadia Comaneci and Albert Einstein and Harry Potter and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, so what do, we, what do we need to do as a teacher? Remember, when you have multiple choice questions, they are graded automatically, and that makes your life really easy. If you have open-ended questions, on the other hand, you will have to manually grade those questions. And it's really easy. Just click on the answers you want to grade, and you see the question, and you see all of your students' answers in one go. And you can grade it here directly and say, well, yeah, this is a correct answer, so I'll mark it as correct. This is partly correct. So I can just say, well, you know what, oh, I'll give you 80%. And I can also add some feedback and say, uh, hey, yeah, you're on the good uh, track, but you might want to change some things uh, and so on and so forth. So I can go through the whole process uh, and grade the answers, right? So let's say this is wrong, wrong, correct, wrong, and correct. 
I'm done. I've graded all the answers for, uh, for that question. And as you see, it gives me already an overview of who got it right, who got it wrong. Uh, I'll, I'll see what the, uh, the mistakes are and everything is neatly grouped. Now, this is one of the features that is very valuable for us as educators, because once again, uh, we actually have access to all of these details. Also, as you see now, because I've graded that assignment, uh, when I'll go back to it, I'll see the grades also next to every student. So now I can choose to focus on supporting those students that need extra support. So Vlad, for example, I could have a chat with him and say, hey, you got a low score, but at the end of the day, you also didn't watch the video. So what's the issue there? Can I help in any way? Maybe you didn't have time or you had some other problems. Uh, let's see what we can do to solve it, right? And once again, I can have the overview for all the questions right here. Now, this is also um, the great book uh, that uh, uh, is also a very useful feature. Of course, remember, if you have a classic class where students are enrolled, you will keep track of their progress across all of your videos. So in the great book, you can actually see all of the videos that uh, you've shared with uh, that class, and you'll see them based on, uh, on the class, or you can change the class from here. Uh, I don't have any students in any assignments here, but you can easily navigate between them. And you'll see the, uh, the score as a percentage. You'll see how much time students watched uh, the videos and you'll have every single video, you'll have the grades. So really easy to use and uh, pretty straightforward. And uh, if you use Moodle, for example, or Google Classroom, this can also integrate with Moodle or Classroom directly. So it could sync the grades uh, as well. So we've been looking at some of the basic things in terms of getting the video running, getting the teacher account up, getting the class, uh, and um, also inviting students. And you've also seen the students uh, part of the story, right? Um, so yeah, live mode, you can use it with live mode as well when using the gradebook. So the gradebook can be very useful in so many different scenarios. Uh, so um, Students can, yeah, I really like the examples I have, I see in the chat. So thank you for sharing them. Yeah, it can totally make our life so much easier because we can help students prepare for our lectures or help them with follow up materials. Now, just a couple of quick other things and tips um, besides the demo, but I want to quickly ask you, do you have any questions related to anything that I showed so far? Oh, yes, actually, something else that I want to show you, uh, something else that I, want, I forgot to show you in the analytics. So the data that Edpuzzle actually collects and shows you is really good. So, for example, for Cleopatra, you see also if that student watched a certain segment of the video uh, again. So you can also see, basically, if students actually tried uh, and went ahead and watched some things more than once to, or some segments more than once to understand the, the question better. The same thing goes for Vlad. I can see, for example, because for this video, I allow them to skip the videos, right? Uh, you can see uh, that basically he watched only the beginning and the end. And then I will say, hey, okay, you did get a low score, but then again, you also didn't watch the video. So what's the story there? On the other hand, with uh, Antonio, let's say, yeah, he did get a good score, but he didn't watch the video as well. So this is where I have to use my judgment as a teacher and decide if I need to follow up on that or not. The main idea is we have a lot of data at our hand, and this is where the, these insights can be very helpful. Um, so Wendy, uh, can you show us how to record videos or make your own videos? Uh, so basically, you can. there are many tools that you can use there. You can just think about recording your screen, for example. So just like I'm going out to the slides and we are recording this Zoom session, that's also an option. You could just record your session and then upload it as a review for your students and add different questions along the, along the line. Um, and you can use other products and services to record your screen, like Chrome extensions or different computers allow you to record the screen directly. And then when you're ready and you want to add your video to, uh, to add puzzle, you can just do that as well. So in the my content bit, rather than starting from videos on YouTube or an add puzzle, you can go to add content and you can upload a video. So uh, then you will upload your own video and then you can start adding questions on top of it. 
So uh, once again, uh, this is in my content. Yeah, hi, uh, Mr. Bod to add content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's wonderful sharing. I, I, I would like to know um, for the video thing, is it we have to, if we make our own video, do we have to upload to YouTube first or it, it can straight away add, add content to here? So as I said, if you go to my content and add content, let me quickly show you. You can just say, okay, I want to upload a video. And as you see, you can drag your video here. So uh, you can choose the file directly, or if you have it in Google Drive, you can also put the, you can also add the video from Google Drive. And it, as you see, I don't go to YouTube, so I just upload the video here. I see. So if the video, I don't have the captions, but I just now you show there's uh, some way that we can put the captions on, right? So initially, if I make the video, I, I don't have the subtitle captions. Uh, are they still able to generate after this? Or? Uh, so Edpuzzle will not generate the uh, closed captions. Celia, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so okay. this will be related. So YouTube does that usually. So the closed captions and the translated translations are generated by YouTube. Uh, when you have YouTube videos for most of them. You can also manually upload them or choose them, but uh, mainly it's generated by YouTube. Uh, so uh, Edpuzzle does not generate the closed captions as far as I'm aware, but that's why I, I was double checking with Celia as well. So uh, if you know anything about that, please do let us know in the, in the chat. Thank you, thank you. Now also talking about YouTube and uploading videos to YouTube, think about the following thing. When you upload a video to YouTube, you don't have to make it public you can upload it as unlisted. And then the question is, okay, if I have a video that's unlisted, it will not show up in the search results. So if you search for it here, it will not show up. So then how can you use it in, uh, uh, in Edpuzzle? Well, you can also go to, uh, to the um, video directly. So let's say you have an unlisted video, which can even be, uh, even be your own, right? Um, and you can just, copy the link, so literally copy this link from YouTube, go to add puzzle and paste it in the search content, paste and search. And as you see, it takes you directly to the video editing part in this case, and you can just start directly. Now, something else that uh, I'll quickly mention here, there is also an extension for the Chrome browser, which allows you to start editing videos directly from YouTube. And I will share the link uh, for, for uh, we will we'll send you some follow-up materials where you have the link for this, and you can just click on it. And same idea, it takes you directly to the video editing interface. So um, that's it. So, uh, Johannes, there isn't a limit on the video size uh, other than the size, so you, you need to have it under one gigabyte, uh, but uh, that's, that's a lot of space, right? So, uh, we have the Edpuzzle extension here. Uh, we have the Moodle integration, and as I said, we will send you these follow-up links, and you have the article here in terms of how you integrate it with Moodle and so on and so forth. And this would be some follow-up materials. So, for you, if you want to have a look at it, uh, it would be a great starting point. And also as the sort of closing part, I would encourage you to check the, um, all of the resources um, created by Edpuzzle. Uh, so you have here, for example, all of the professional development, they have really awesome quick courses. So if you want to go to the basics or if you want to go explore some more advanced uh, ways of using that puzzle or if you want to find out more about project-based learning or flipping uh, lessons and activities that would be a great starting point so uh, thank you Celia for sharing the, the link as well in the chat as I said the slides uh, will send you a follow-up with these slides and you have the links both for the trainings, you have the link for the Moodle integration, you have the link for the Edpuzzle extension here. So you'll have them all handy. And I am aware of your time as well. So we are already one minute over and uh, I would not want to keep you for, for uh, longer than it was planned. I am happy though to answer any other questions or to spend more time with you if you want me to show you something else uh, as well. We would recommend you once again to have a look at the, uh, at the trainings and the resources. Start with Edpuzzle 1, go to Edpuzzle 2, play around, create your videos, see how this works. And by the way, we also had a question. Uh, you also, we also had a question earlier about creating our videos. You'll see that you have even some 
classes here or small courses related to how do you actually start thinking about the videos? How do you um, uh, get them to, how do you tailor the different approaches for blended learning and so on and so forth. So lots of useful materials here. I do encourage you to have a look at them. Uh, and uh, once again, happy to answer any other questions you might have. Also, I do understand if you need to um, leave because we are already two minutes over time as well. Uh, but just quickly as a thank you for everybody, uh, just uh, thank you for being here in the session. I do hope it was useful. So just quickly tell me in the chat uh, how, how excited you are about uh, using Edpuzzle or if you think it would be useful, it would be happy, I would be happy to see some of your insights. And of course, if we don't have any other questions, um, we will be wrapping the session. Uh, <laughs> I'm happy to see all the very excited and uh, super excited. That's the way to go. Once again, I do encourage you to start using it. Also think about how you can collaborate with the other members of the faculty, because once you create a video, you don't have to recreate it every year. So you might spend some time to create a video, but then you're set for that class uh, or that course for a long time. Feel free to get in touch. If you have questions, we are more than happy to, to help out. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we also have a feedback form from uh, Alex, so please do fill that in as well. I have a, I have a, I have a question. So uh, how do we add a co-teacher to like together um, edit a video uh, for the students? Uh, so when you add, when you work with the videos in terms of uh, the, the video editing, remember that you can easily share them across the faculty. So you will have all of the videos uh, visible for all the other teachers. So if somebody wants to use a video, that's one part that will be pretty straightforward. Um, other than that, uh, at this stage, there isn't a co-teacher in the class as far as I'm aware. Uh, or you can, sorry. Uh, uh, this is from the link for Google Classroom. So if you do have the Google Classroom integration, uh, it, it will pull it in. Um, but manually, uh, that would be a bit of an extra hope. Uh, but you can do go to different LMSs depending on what LMS you're using. So uh, I'm not sure about the Microsoft Teams once again, because that was the part that uh, well, is not out there yet. But Classroom, Moodle, uh, different LMSs. You do have all of the support articles as well. So this is the, I've linked the one for Moodle, for example, uh, and um, you have all of the integrations and all of the steps here as well. And I will link this article as well, or the links uh, in, the, in the slide as well. So you have uh, also the instructions clear step-by-step -step on what you do with all of these ones. So this will be the link we will be adding to, to the slides as well. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, uh, Bogdan. Um, and thank you, Celia, as well, for uh, fielding the uh, questions. Thank so you, I think, well. yeah, uh, if, uh, if you have any last questions uh, for the uh, Ed Puzzle team, uh, either Celia or, or Bogdan can, can uh, if you have any questions, please um, shoot away so uh, and i'm also looking at the um chat um, function now so, uh, this, uh, and i think we have somebody who's teaching japanese yeah uh, <laughs> so do you want to ask any question any any resources in japanese probably <laughs> All right, so th if there's no question, um, uh, we thank um, the Ed Puzzle team very, very much. Uh, so we appreciate uh, you having this uh, really, really short um, uh, questions. Uh, of course, Celia has um, given us the email to uh, ask for any questions in the future. Uh, uh, hopefully, you can do use that. Uh, remember, you can actually sign in with your uh, um mail because we use a uh, gmail uh, uh, google mail for our email so it's, it's really really easy to do that you just click on the uh, sign up button and then uh, just use google and then just choose your um mail and then uh, it will uh, bring you into the 
uh, add into add puzzle uh, really really quickly. So um, again, um, if you didn't have any questions, uh, uh, please uh, give uh, uh, a hand of applause uh, for the uh, add puzzle team. You click on you can click on the reaction and then you can <laughs> uh, uh, put the clap and the thumbs up and um, uh, the love heart and um, all the rest in our um, uh, Zoom account. Thank and, you so much. <laughs> and I think uh, that's all that we have uh, the time for today. So if you have any questions, uh, do uh, go into uh, even the they are also, they also have a Facebook uh, group as well for uh, support. So that's uh, really, really good. And yeah, I think uh, we can leave it at that. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, and we will end this uh, session now. Any 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 last word? Uh, on my side, if there are no more questions, once again, huge thank you for being here. Uh, I do hope you got some ideas and some inspiration. Do stay in touch. Uh, you have the email. You have the Facebook group, uh, which is the uh, Malaysia Ed Puzzle group. So uh, it's also local to uh, Malaysia. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, and I do hope you will start using a puzzle and uh, you, you will see how much time it can save and how much it can actually save you, uh, help you with uh, the teaching process. All right. Thank you very much. Thank see you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye.